Today, I am joined by Patrick Flotman, who plays for North East United in the Indian Super League. Thank you so much for joining me today, Patrick. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. We'll start with my basic run of the mill stock standard first question I like to ask everybody. Just where did your passion and love for football first begin? Um, to be honest, for me, it was actually through the FA Cup. Um, I remember watching the final in 2005 um, and Liverpool won it. And ever since then, I've been a, a big Liverpool fan and obviously Stevie G fan. If you remember that, that final, he had a pretty good game. Um, and that's kind of where it all started for me. And um, from then on, I've just ever, I've loved football since. So, yeah. And when you first started getting into football, did you have many football heroes? Um, if so, who were they? Obviously, Stephen Gerrard was just mentioned, but was there anyone else? I used to like watching players, obviously Liverpool, like watching Martin Skirtle, Daniel Lager, center house from there. Um, I always liked players like Roy Keane. Um, who else did I look up to? Um, Ramos, even when he was a younger age at Real Madrid, even though he was playing as a right back. Um, lots of players, really. Roberto Carlos I used to like as well. Um, so, yeah. Now, you just mentioned a lot of defenders. Um, you're obviously a defender yourself. Were you always a defender when you started playing football or did you move into that role later on? Yeah, so I think obviously when you, you start playing younger, it runs a bit all over the park when you're you know, from age six, seven, eight and whatnot. Um, but then once I, I got into playing on the full-size field in, in under-11s, I've always played um, as a centre-back or back then we used to play with the, the sweeper. Um, we'd have the three and I'd be in behind there. Um, so yeah, I've always always been a, a defender in the center. Now you started off with a club that, you know, while I'm not from the area, it's grown a bit close to my heart, Blacktown City. And then you obviously moved on to Sydney FC, full professional setting, full professional setup. So when you first made that transition from Blacktown to Sydney FC, did you find the step up and change in mentality difficult at all? I think. It was actually a, a very good transition, to be honest. I think Blacktown City is probably one of the best MPL clubs in the country. Um, I can't speak highly enough of it. And, and my time there was, was really great, um, especially in that period. I think it was two years where um, from the 18s, 20s and the first grade, they'd all won a, a championship. So, you know, I think the setup there is really good. It's um, obviously led by the head coach, Mark Crittenden. He's, he's an awesome coach and, and an even better guy. Um, so I think that made the transition a lot better for me um, when I was going into Sydney. Um, and obviously, it is a bit more of a professional environment being an A-League club. Um, but it wasn't so much of a shock per se. Um, but it was just a, a bit of a... Uh, how do you say? I guess because obviously you can see the, the A-League boys training when I, when I first moved here in the youth team. So you're getting that step closer to the... To the um, professional setup and I guess it just makes it a bit easier seeing how these guys go about their, their daily routine at training and whatnot. Um, and that was probably about it really in terms of in terms of that transition. You made a decision to move to Asia after a couple of seasons with Sydney FC, you know, in their youth team playing a lot of time. So how did your move to Thailand with Air Force United first come about? Yeah, so um, obviously I finished up my time at Sydney with the with the youth team and um, it actually came through Danny Townsend, the CEO of Sydney. He put me in touch with um, a guy named David Mitchell, who had another contact over in Thailand. Um, and I ended up going over for a trial. I didn't really know what I was in for, to be honest. I had no clue about Asian football or, um, you know, what the standard of the league was going to be like, what living was going to be like. Um, but I thought, you know, why not? I just, I've got nothing to lose. Um, and I went over for a week and after the week, um, the club said they wanted me, but I actually wasn't too sure at the time. And luckily they were, you know, um, very patient with me. And they said, look, you can go back home and decide. So, yeah, I ended up coming back home to Australia. And then I think it was after one sleep, I just said, yeah, I've got to do it. Um, and so then I ended up signing with Air Force. Now, Australia is a pretty unique country compared to the rest of the world. And a lot of footballers I've talked to when they've gone overseas to Europe or Asia, South America, 
have said they found it a little bit weird to adjust to, you know, the different cultures, the different football cultures. So when you first went over to Thailand, did you find it difficult or strange at all? If so, what were some of the things that you found, you know, the most different to Australia? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think first heading over there, it's a completely different culture and, and obviously a different language. You know, everyone speaks Thai. There's not that many people who speak English, and if they do, it's only a little bit. Um, and so it was a bit of a cultural shock, but to be honest, their culture is really awesome over there. I love that, you know, they're very friendly people, very welcoming um, to people from overseas. Um, the hardest part for me would probably just be in terms of communicating on the pitch, especially as a, as a centre-back. Some of the Thai boys, they know a bit of English, um, but, you know, sometimes things, I think, get a bit lost in translation as well. Um, so that was definitely hard to adjust to at the start. Um, even other things like, um, food, um, general things like living as well. I was pretty lucky to have quite a nice apartment in, in Bangkok, which I really enjoyed. Um, little things like that. But I suppose, you know, after a few weeks into a month, you, you, you're used to it and you're back into the swing of things. It's, it's like anywhere at the end of the day, you're playing professional football, you're training each and every day with the schedule. So I think that really helps. Now, when you come back to Australia, you come back with Sydney FC and for the past, I'd say, six or seven seasons in Australian football, Sydney FC have been really the dominant side with great players such as Alex Wilkinson. They've had Ryan McGowan, Ryan McGrant, all in your sort of defensive position. So as a young defender coming through, you know, getting to work with someone like Ryan McGowan or Alex Wilkinson, who have both played in World Cups, Asia Cups, what was the most important things you kind of learned from them? And what was it like? you know, playing with players of that stature? It was obviously great to be able to train with those boys and for two years, and they're obviously really great guys as well. Um, and I think the thing that I learned the most is just um, consistency. If you look at their games, they're just consistent throughout each and every game. You don't really see a big drop-off, you know. Wilkes in particular, you see that guy, every time he plays, it's the exact same. And... Um, and also other things like taking care of your body. Um, you know, those guys, even though they're getting older, they're taking care of their body. They're still playing at such a high level, um, which has made me realise how important that part of the game is as well. Now, obviously, we have such good players, as I mentioned, in Sydney FC's squad, it would be hard for a player to break in and, you know, take the position of an Alex Wilkinson. So when you played for Sydney FC, you found yourself getting very limited minutes, you know, five minutes here off the bench, 10 minutes. So as a young player trying to break through, trying to make your name, how difficult and frustrating did you find it, you know, getting maybe on the pitch for a couple of minutes where you didn't sometimes even touch the ball? Yeah, mate. yeah, definitely. It was, um, it was definitely tough at times. I think um, I knew the risk, um, or I guess you could say risk um, in, in terms of when I came back from Thailand, knowing that I wasn't going to be a starter player. Um, and I knew that minutes weren't going to come easy either. Um, and it, it is tough when you, you know, you're working hard in training and, and you feel like you're doing well. The coach is telling you you're doing well and, and you're not getting minutes. But at the, at the same time, that's a part of the game as well. Um, and it's more so a test of your mentality. You, you've got to stay strong and you've got to maintain that level, particularly at Sydney, um, because they have such a high standard. You know, if, if you were to be thrown in, you need to be in the right mindset. Otherwise, you know, you it's kind of like sink or swim, you know, if, if you're not ready for it, you'll just, you'll sink. So I think that's probably the main thing that I learned from it, being able to stay mentally strong and, and prepared, even though, you know, some days you're thinking, oh, why am I, why am I training? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to play anyway, but you just, you never know. And, and you've got to think of the future as well. So, you know, when, it, when an opportunity is going to become, you've got to be ready. So it's, that's kind of how I took it. And um, that's what I learned from it, I suppose. Yeah. Now, the A-League in particular has had a lot of very good attacking players over the years. You know, Bessart for Risha is just one of many, Bruno Fornaroli. But for you being a defender coming through, uh, was there any attackers that, you know, every time you've seen them on the opposition team sheet, you kind of dreaded thinking, geez, I can't believe we're playing against this guy. That gave you a real tough time. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I can't really... I wouldn't pinpoint one where I, where I was thinking, oh, you know, shit, I've, I've got to um, mark him today or et cetera. Um, I suppose we always had a game. 
game plan of, of having to defend against the, the other team and as centre-backs as well, particularly against the strikers. So, you know, we do video and stuff on, on their movements and I guess you just try and pinpoint um, their strengths and weaknesses and, and how you can um, defend against them. Um, it's, but obviously, like you said as well, there are obviously class players in, in the A-League, but um, I suppose there's probably not one that I could have pinpointed. And you also had a short-term loan deal with Brisbane Raw towards the end of last season. Now, a few players I've spoken to who have been on loan have kind of said it's a little bit of a weird feeling going into a new dressing room with players you don't really know and, you know, you're not setting up there permanently. So how did you find the whole experience being on loan? Did you find it a bit weird or were you just happy to, you know, try something new for a little bit? Honestly, for me, it was, it was really awesome. I loved my time at Brizzy. Um, for me, it was a it was a fresh start and, and a chance to, I guess, show myself in, in front of a new team and a new coach and, and just be in a whole new environment. Um, you know, and uh, I'm grateful for Warren obviously to be taken that was such a short time it was only two weeks um i mean the the first game that i that i came on i hadn't even done a training session um i literally met the boys up in central coast and um he threw me on that night for the last 10 um which i guess goes to show you know, his faith in players um so i guess that that gave a bit of um confidence in myself as well obviously because i hadn't played many games in sydney that year none i don't think actually up to that, that point um so for a coach to come and you know throw me on without even um having a training session was really good for me and you know i, I think um i can understand how, how for some players it's, it might be a bit strange because obviously you know you're not going to stay with the team you're going to be leaving at some point um but i think you've just got to stay in the moment and, and enjoy it whilst you can and i think that's certainly what i did at brisbane i had a great time now i think the reason why most people watching this video would be watching is because you're currently playing in the Indian Super League with North East United. So firstly, just how did that move to North East come about? Yes, so it, it came a bit out of the blue after the, our season um, had finished. It was a bit of interest. Um, at the time, I was dealing with a bit of injury um, to my foot, so I wasn't actually ready to head over. So I, I had to tell them that, you know, I'm interested, but at this point, I'm, I'm not ready. Um, and then they ended up coming back a month or two later and saying look we, we're still keen so um for me it was a no-brainer really to come over here and to to get minutes um that's the most important thing for me at the moment and, and i've really enjoyed my time so far here been a few aussies playing in india over the past couple of seasons um did they have any role in you coming coming over there did you speak to any of them before joining yeah, I um I spoke to Alfie a little bit when I was at Sydney. Um, Jacob Tratt, who's now at Adelaide, I spoke to him a bit before, and Scott Neville as well um, when I was up in Brisbane about the Brisbane, sorry, about their time um, over in India. And all the boys um, were quite positive about their time over there, so that definitely helped um, in making my decision. Um, but like I said before, the, the main thing for me was the opportunity to, to be playing games. And so that was the, the main thing for me. And as you just mentioned, the opportunity to play games, you played a lot of games already for North East United. Have you found it difficult to adjust to, you know, playing full 90 minutes week in, week out, considering you had, you know, a bit part role at Sydney FC and Brisbane Raw? Or has it been just a pleasant experience for you? Definitely more so like a personal experience, like you say. I think um, for me, it's it's been really great just being able to come into a new environment again um, and being able to play week in, week out, um, which is what I wasn't getting for the past two years. And I think that's really important for a footballer just to be playing games and it builds your confidence and it's obviously great for your game because at the end of the day, that's, that's why we all play. We play to play games. Um, and so, yeah, for me at the moment, I'm, I'm just really enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying training. We've got a great team, great bunch of lads. So, yeah, it's good. And you've hit the ground running in India. You've even found yourself on the score sheet, which, you know, not many defenders can say that. So can you talk us through your first goal for North East United? That was obviously one of my goals before coming over is to, to get in the back of the net a few times. Um, and uh, this goal just, it came from a set piece. Um, we hadn't actually practiced it in training. It was just off the cuff. And I think one of the boys played it short to, to Imran and he whipped it back post and I happened to be there and just nodded away. 
Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed I can get a couple more before the season ends. Free kick here for North East United. Slips it down the line. Still plenty of red shirts in here. Must surely be a second. And they may well be on their way to victory here because the Aussie has come up trumps. It is Patrick Plotman's first ever goal in senior football. Remember where you saw it, John? It was here at the Fatorda. And look what happens here. It's not the greatest free kick. They get that wrong. But the ball went back in, allows Flotman to come in at that far post. And it's a stooping header to push it past the Rindam, giving him no chance in goal. But I tell you, sympathy zero at the moment for SC East Bengal. And fellow Aussie in India, Jordan Murray, has a unique celebration where he kind of does like a little snake thing. Can we expect to see any sort of Australia-themed celebration from Patrick Flopman the next time he puts the ball in the back of the net? I'm not too sure. I'd have to, I'd have to think of one. If you've got any ideas, let me know, because at the moment I haven't really got much going. I just go with, with how I'm feeling. But, um, yeah, not too sure. Now, as we can tell from the, you know, somewhat choppy internet and choppy um, quality of this interview, you're currently in a hotel in India. Now, you've been in a hotel pretty much your whole time since joining India. How difficult have you found that experience? Yes, it's probably been a bit tougher than I first thought. Um, we're obviously, we're not allowed to leave the hotel here except for training and, and for games. Um, uh, luckily the hotel is actually quite nice here we, you know we've got a pool area we have a pool table some ping pong tables as well um, which definitely helps um, but it is it does get tough at times you definitely um, you do miss being able to just go out in just for a walk down past the shops grab a coffee and stuff like that um, you know we can literally see the beach um, from our windows here so it's a bit tough at times um, but at the same time you, you've got to look at the positives and, and try and stay focused. And, and the most important thing is obviously the football, um, which gives you plenty of time to think about that. Now back to Australia for just a moment. You've also represented your country at youth level. So when you first put that call up and when you first put on that green and gold jersey, if you can describe it, just what was that moment like? Yeah, it was it was a really proud moment, obviously. Uh, I was still at Blacktown at the time, actually, when I first um, had to go in the, the Aussie squad there. Um, you know, it was obviously a, a proud moment playing for my country and hopefully I can do it at, at international senior level at, at some point in my career. That's obviously the goal. Um, but in saying that, you know, at the same time, you got to think about where you're at now and, and club football. That's the most important thing for me, just, just getting minutes in. Speaking of goals, um, 2022 has just started. I nearly said 2021. And it's been a pretty good start to the year for yourself, I would say. But for the rest of 2022, what are you hoping to achieve? What can we expect to see from Patrick Flotman? Yeah, look, I, I think for myself um, is, I guess, just playing as many football games as I can. At the moment, I'm in North East and, and hopefully we can have some more success in the second part of the season. Um, you know, and for me, that's that's my main goal at the moment: playing games, getting as much consistency as I can, and and hopefully that'll bring um, positive things later on down the track. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Patrick. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Arrow Sport. Go to the link in the description, and the friendly team at Arrow Sport will help you create your own football dream jersey. Whether it's starting from scratch or using one of their many templates on their website, creating a jersey with Arrow Sports is easy and prices start from just $50. Go to www.arrowsport.com.au and make your football kit dreams become a reality.